Everyone, this is FaZe and welcome to my channel. Last week, Apple introduced the all new iPhone 16 lineup. And as I was watching the keynote, I was actually quite impressed with the standard iPhone 16, as it's quite a decent purchase even for those users who go for the Pro models every year. In fact, a lot of the new features in the iPhone 16 Pro is coming to the base iPhone 16 as well, such as camera control, a nearly equivalent A18 chip, and Apple intelligence. But I still believe that it's smarter to go for the iPhone 16 Pro than the standard iPhone 16. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over all those top reasons for why you should go for the Pro and not the standard one. So without any further ado, let's begin. So the first reason that I wanna talk about why you should go for the Pro is the new bigger and better displays. And yes, there are some individuals who like the smaller devices like the iPhone mini, for example, but sales numbers actually show that a lot of people don't prefer smaller devices. They prefer bigger screen sizes. And that's exactly why Apple has come out with the new Pro models with larger displays. And the best part is, is that though the Pro models are getting a bigger display, the actual body of the device itself is not getting much larger. It's practically the same. So the iPhone 16 Pro features a 6.3 inch display, which is a great upgrade over the iPhone 16's 6.1 inch display. And the iPhone 16 Pro Max has a 6.9 inch display, which is bigger than the iPhone 16 Plus's 6.7 inch display. So once again, you have two devices that are similarly sized in terms of the overall body footprint, right? When you're holding it, you're not gonna find a big difference between holding a Plus or a Max or the standard 16 and the standard size 16 Pro, but you get a bigger display, so you have more content and viewing area overall. But it's not just the screen size, it's also the refresh rate, because with the 16 Pro models, you get ProMotion, which gives you a 120 hertz refresh rate and if you have used ProMotion on an iPhone or an iPad, then you probably already know how amazing it is. It's buttery smooth. And when you go from something that has ProMotion and you go to something that doesn't, it's a night and day difference. In fact, this year when I was reviewing the iPad Pro and the iPad Air, I loved both the models, but I actually preferred using the Pro a lot more because of the ProMotion display. And with iPhones, I feel like it makes an even bigger of a difference because you're using an iPhone almost all day long, right? So when you're using it so much, that display really makes a big impact. After all, you know, they're slimming down the bezels and the whole focus of the iPhone is on the display. And when it's a better display and it's a bigger display, it makes a big impact. And also the pro iPhone models are the only ones that has an always on display. And once you get used to an always on display, I think it makes a big difference at the same time. So the bigger, better displays with ProMotion is one advantage that the Pro has over the standard iPhone. But the second thing that I want to talk about is camera. And on paper, it might seem like they are very similar, but in quite practicality, they are quite different as well. So let me go over the differences or the advantages that the Pro cameras give you over the standard. So the Pro models have a telephoto lens with up to five times optical zoom, the non-pros lack the third camera altogether. With the Pro model, you get a significantly upgraded ultra-wide camera that is now 48 megapixels as opposed to the 12 megapixels on the non-pros. So if you really like to zoom out and get those ultra-wide camera shots in great quality, you're really gonna like it. And also with macro shots, if you really like to zoom in and stuff, even that's gonna be much nicer on the Pro versus the non-pro. Now, when it comes to video, if you are someone who is a content creator and you really like to film video, then I think you're gonna really like this next thing. Because now you're gonna get slow-mo video at 4K up to 120 frames per second. And once again, this is only exclusive to the Pro models. And last but certainly not the least, the Pro line also carries over its camera advantages from the previous year. So for example, you get better image stabilization, you get the adaptive True Tone Flash, night mode portraits, pro raw, pro res video, and more. So if you're really into the camera of the iPhones and you're really into photography and videography, I think going for the pro is a much better purchase overall. And last but certainly not the least, the battery life. We use our iPhones so much every single day that the iPhone's battery life is also something we want an improvement on. And this year, Apple did a massive improvement to route the iPhone 16 lineup when it comes to battery. In fact, the entire iPhone 16 lineup got a better battery performance than its predecessors, but the increases are even better with the Pro models. So for an example, with the iPhone 16 Pro, you get 27 hours of video playback and 85 hours of audio playback. With the standard iPhone 16, you get 22 hours of video playback 
and 80 hours of audio playback. So clearly the Pro model has the bigger advantage here, but also if you go for the larger iPhone 16 models, that's where you can get a great performance as well. So for example, with the 16 Pro Max, you get 33 hours of video playback and 105 hours of audio playback. And with the iPhone 16 Plus, on the other hand, you get 27 hours of video playback and 100 hours of audio playback. So long story short, if you're going for the Pro model, whether it's a smaller one or the Max version, you're gonna get much better battery life in comparison to its standard counterparts. So at the end of the day, all the iPhone 16 models are absolutely wonderful. Like I said in the very beginning, you're still gonna get Apple intelligence, you're gonna get the new camera control, and you're gonna get an A18 chip. Now, obviously the Pros have a A18 Pro chip, which gives even slightly better performance and stuff like that to optimize the great camera experience. But once again, if you go for the Pro, you're kind of future-proofing yourself. You get an amazing camera, great battery life, and at the end of the day, a much better display. And trust me, it's 2024 right now, and it hurts me to say that the iPhone 16, the standard one, still has a 60 hertz display. And sure, a lot of customers who buy the iPhone 16 won't find a big difference, but once you go Pro and use the 120 hertz display, and then you go back to a 60 hertz display, that's where you're really gonna notice the difference. In fact, now when I use an iPhone that has a non-promotion display, it feels slow and as if it's lagging. And then when you go to a Pro model, the experience is completely different. But at the end of the day, I wanna know your thoughts. Which iPhone model are you going for? Are you going for the standard iPhone model or the Pro model? Comment below, let me know. Also later this week, I'm getting my hands on both the standard and the Pro model. So I'm gonna be doing an unboxing and review for you guys. So stay tuned to those videos dropping later this week. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time.